um, sorry guys uh, about the delay. The um, these things happen uh, sometimes, or well, very often. All right. Uh, so um, about the interface, um, I'm not going to cover everything on details, but I, I would like to start open the program side 3D. Well, in, in the structure analysis, we have several programs. Um, the ones we are going to cover today are going to be 3D, side 3D. We are going to talk a little bit about the portal frame generator and that's all. But at the same time, uh, I want you to know that uh, side connection is, um, is, uh, is something extra that uh, will be able for uh, to manage uh, well you can you can manage if you suppose you have um, a warehouse and you have more than 200 nuts or joints to solve and, um, and some of them are it's impossible to do it uh, using the software so you can come here and start working with SiteConnect and you will be able to finish that uh, or give any solution beside that uh, we have the bean environment uh, which is, uh, an, is another uh, in, the, in the cloud. And in the cloud, you can also have the same program, Site 3D, which is called Beam Site 3D. It's the same thing. <clears throat> but in, in that case, that particular case, you can, you can develop more information regarding to uh, elements like air conditions, uh, electricity, and all the cowl, that kind of stuff. But uh, um, also, we are working in a very nice software in the bean environment, which is called bean steel. And bean steel, you will be able to um, develop any joints you want, you might need, any combinations, because right now what we have, uh, I will show you, uh, we have so several, uh, several uh, options, but at, uh, not enough for every joint in, 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 in and other connections. So this is it. So I'm going to start for the side 3D. Just click here. We are in the version 2021E. Okay, we have three. Uh, we have four columns. The first one is the files, is where you place and save your uh, your job. Um, the recent files, the second column, help is something that you might um, do. I need it when you are starting the software. Uh, when you learn the software, you, has, you can start with the examples. You have some documents, special user manuals, and the calculation manuals. And the last column, which is called the the way to uh, connect with the with the cloud, which is the Bean Server Center. All right. Now I'm connected with the Bean Server Center. This is my name, Diego Cuellar. And also on the bottom, you if you click here, you will display everything in the environment. So um, I'm going to start with a new job. Just give it a name, could be, you know, example. And uh, the browse, that browse show you where, you know, where are you going to place perhaps this job. And also the extension is going to be dot ed3. That's mean that you are using uh, this uh, the Cyp 3D and any any description. I'm not going to get involved with that. Maybe I'm going to add one number here and accept it. Okay. Well, you can start with a empty example, or if you have any IFSC files, you can start that. I'm going to do it with the um, empty example. So. This one, this part, I will talk about later. Um, accept it. Okay. So uh, for now on, you are going to work in 3D environment. But the first thing is that um, if you want to introduce a knot, for example, a new one, uh, you know the cursor, uh, check everything, any connections, any cross section. You can click here, and now you will see one little knot here. That point, uh, the the numbers go by defaults. So yeah, the next ones. If I if I want something on, on top, you have uh, this extension that give you. Uh, you can create the the height of that the second knot 
in the zeta direction. And uh, for every knot have two conditions, the external fixity and internal fixity. External means that it suppose in the future, in the near future, are going to have something <clears throat> connected with the soil. So that connection could be one of these options. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to introduce the fixity one. That means that displacements are fixed in X and Y and Zeta. Also, the rotations are fixed. Um, there are several options, and uh, but if for this case, I'm going to continue with this selection. So that's the way we, we um, right away understand that this is the fixed the connection. And the one on top, if you click on top, you displace it. If you have uh, two, the one bar and both sides are connected, this is the case. But if it's not, if it's, it's, it's not the case, you can introduce an internal fixity. That means, um, suppose a column, the column is connected with the soil, so maybe a um, slab, and that means external fixity. An internal fixity is another joint on top. And that one on top also have different connections. Could be the fixity one, could be the fixed node with, with partial fixity, or maybe one that you can create in your own. So that's it. So it's, it's a fixed node on top. And the second part is just to introduce any bar you want. So a new one. So from this place, you can create a new one, new bar. By default, the program displayed this bar, this kind of bar. <clears throat> and then um, we have several options here. We can start with the generic ones. If perhaps you want to need the tight, select this. Um, and later on, uh, if you need more information about this particular wave of solving the problems, um, you got this extra information. Also, um, this kind of bar um, is, uh, has to be working in tension. It's not allowed to work, you know, if, 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 the, if the bar are be able to connect it in tension always, the, the, that means that the, the, the structure have a solution. And also the, the last two buttons, the columns and beams, um, recently and a few years ago, we start working in inside 3D with like uh, columns um, and beams in concrete. <clears throat> and also, um, this, um, you can also uh, work uh, with different uh, combinations. Not only the metallic ones, you can introduce any timber, any aluminum structure, um, concrete as well. And in, what is the difference? Sometimes, you know, people ask me, what is the difference with this concrete what ones and the other, the last, the last two? So in these generic ones, these concrete columns, a concrete bar uh, are, doesn't show the reinforcements. But in the other one, the color on the beam, once you define <clears throat> the analysis and you finish the analysis, you will get, will, you, you get that information. So, okay, so um, suppose we want to continue with this kind of uh, roll steel section. Um, over here in this button, in this grid, <clears throat> you have um, another options that there are some factories that uh, we view uh, that we have an extra information regarding to pro all the products that they uh, offer to you. And um, they post here in the program. Some of them are from Spain, some of them are from America. Um, <clears throat> if in, in the future, it depends on the people who are watching this this conference. In the future, if you have any factory over there and you have the full information, you can send it to us and we can introduce it here. I'm sorry, guys. 
Um, so uh, continue with this. You just choose one of them, accept it, and you will display later that option over here. Uh, and if you, when you are working and you find something, some, not, not here, maybe in the next profile. Yeah, for example, that one. Um, it shows something in red. That red mark means that uh, this uh, profile are not available for you, but uh, doesn't mean that you cannot introduce it. You have to, uh, in, 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 this, in this section, you can develop also any, any other profiles that you have already in, the town, in your town, local town, and introduce it here by hand, okay? So this is it. So I'm going to introduce the first one, this kind of profile, the IP. Accept it. Well, I don't. I, this is the case where you want to check the the fire resistance. So then you can click from here up to here, and now you have the beam, right? So um, the first thing that you uh, are going to displace this over here on this side, you have the global reference. Um, the global reference are different from the local reference. If you click here, later, if you want to displace the bar, for example, you want to check to describe the bar, you will see that the reference is completely different. So you might know this thing from the beginning because sometimes that I'm going to show you now the forces or the load case scenario that we can introduce in the bar. We can introduce the, the join. You can introduce any force in any joints on top of the bottom. You can introduce uh, several options. And once you define these options, you have to make a reference. It could be the global reference or the particular reference like this one. All right, so um, let me show you the examples because I already had one. Okay, I know not, not that one. So we have now uh, the load case scenario. Uh, I'm going to displace the all of them. We have several several cases. We have the self weight the Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. If I'm going to see all of them, select the view all, and we have this, right? Okay, now the scale is not good enough. Maybe it's too high. Um, now you go back to the load. You can modify the scales. Maybe here we can introduce 0 0.1, 0 0.1 everywhere. I'm sorry. Point one. Let me check. Point one. I'm going to intro reduce a little bit the scale, right? Accept it. Now it's okay. I'm getting better. So, so now um, just to show you the how to introduce the loads in the bar. Let's click in the bar. You can displace all of them. So if we go back, for example, to the to, to edit the forces on the bar, if I click here, if I click, for example, the self one, sorry, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Let me fix it, please.
Okay, that one. Okay, so we go back to the joints, edit the the load case of the bar, of the bar. Oh my goodness, sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, uh, going back to what we start. So I'm going to edit the load cases. Um, and perhaps what I need is to, oh my goodness, why? It's another example, no, Diego? If it's giving you error or that. No, I don't know why it's doing showing this. Maybe you are using another standard, no? I mean, don't open all the time the same one if it doesn't work. No, no, I need to show that once all. Let me finish. All right. So we have several, several options here. Um, okay, we have several, several options. Each, each of one are different. So suppose this, this option, for example, uh, if I, if you click, if I click in, in the load case, you will have an acceptance. For Q1, for example, is different location. I'm introducing uh, any force on top of the knot is about 10 tons. The K number two is about five tons. Um, the K3, this is a moment. It's a moment. It's a flexion in the Y direction. And Q4 is another moment, but in this case, it's a relative location which is in the bottom of the column. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you is how to introduce this, this hypothesis in the program. So we go for general information. Um, we go back to the additional load cases. And uh, before, before that, I need to create that information in the software. So we go for the load, the live load, so I did for key one, for key two, and key four. And if I'm going to displace everyone, you have extra information regarding to that. If you need it, you just displace that here. And also on the bottom, you have the combination. That combination, I can show you the combination that we are doing it. So that's the combinations. And accept it. Okay. Not only for that, uh, you will see that every every load that we are created here, uh, you can do it with wind, any condition in wind, also for earthquakes, and also for snow, or soil pressure, any accidental force. So, but the basic ones are the self weight and the dead load, light load as well. In this case, I'm introducing the uh, light load case scenario. Um, okay, um, now, I'm going to show you another profile. Let's, let me see. A simple beam. Well, in a simple beam, uh, already we already have the analysis. When you display the analysis and you have color here in the icons, means the analysis is done. And the first thing that I want to, to see in this, uh, well, the, we go for the loads. I'm going to show the visible ones. Oh, I'm going to show you all of them and also the loads 
and you can edit, for example, key one, the key, the self wet uh, dead load, and another case. Any any of them, you click in the right in the right click of the of your mouse, you can displace the load descriptions. This is a, a point load. The, that one is the uniform load that we're using right now. Um, that's the uh, apply moment. Also, we can apply a, an increase of uh, temperature. Um, the last one, an increase in variable temperature. That's what the remit when I, when I was talking about the global reference and the local reference, you have it here. Now we're using the global axis, global axis which is the the one on the left side of the bottom um the look the second case is the local axis is the the bar itself and uh you gotta be careful if you want to to use one of them but uh, just not for just to be consistent with the information uh continue with the global axis and we'll be okay so when this thing is done i can create for example the the state limits of the bar you click you can check everywhere if it, according to the resistance as you know the solicitations are the reactions the cheers and the bending and about the deformations we have the torsion or twist we have the elastic deformations and the maximum deformations um, this uh, if th this uh, check give you in details here one by one. The only thing that are not here are the 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 defle deflection. I'll show you later about that kind of deflection. Um, over here in the right top uh, to the right, you have the full report regarding to that beam. Okay, you can go around check. Any normative, I will show you later about the normative. And also, uh, for the second analysis, you can visualize the deformation of the bar. And also, I'm going to introduce the profile. I'm going to turn it a little bit. And also, the scale, which is maybe I'm going to increase it by 500. And now on the bottom you have you can select the combinations could be the sample of cases could be the displacements and that's all you know the other ones are for different elements but the the self the simple load case could be the self weight or the lead dead load and also the light load if if you want to see really how the structure is is moving click here and you will see it right away if everything is okay this is one way to check if the structure behave the way we are expecting so that's that's a good reference first then um, for example going to check for the displacements and for the displacement we have several combinations in this case we have several combinations and i'll show you for this combination uh, what we have is something like that um, beside that, um, uh, we go back to the profile and remember that I was talking about the, the bar and the bar, the, there is something that we call the backlink, the lateral black backlink. Lateral backlink could be for this side or the other one. In this case, the lateral backlink for this one is uh, selected this way, but remember that the lateral backlink for the upper flange you must choose the the this um, distance LB, and also the spacing. If you if this bar are located in the rafter of the warehouse, um, you must be aware about the distance between the, the between the purlins, and that distance between the purlins is is a a, a very tricky way to to introduce. For example, if you are going to use the distance between them. If the rafter is one meter and a half uh, on top, 
So you introduce, it's better to introduce that distance because it's this, that's the restriction, All right? Um, this is a very key uh, options that you must understand right away, especially when you are doing a warehouse and, and you want to check the structure properly. If you don't do so, uh, perhaps the structure are going to be over over designs and also uh, could be cost effective in 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 in, in, in the structure. Beside that, uh, we have the bar and also we have the the limit definition, limiting definitions. For example, in this case, um, you you maybe sometimes what we we can understand that this the deflection um suppose um, if the beam is not very slender it doesn't uh, comply comply by by deform by deflection and we must set up these things right away that's the 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 limit deflection that is doesn't show in the check uh, uh, document that I showed you before, because this is separate. But you gotta understand that if you display this, you have some numbers by default. But I think the the relative maximum deflections goes by the normative, and you must check the normative. That's just for 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 example, as an example, if you choose L divided by 500, means that you are using uh, walls. Um, very um, poor, low, uh, but some particular walls, but if you go for an elf over the 400, means that you are using um, poor walls, something like that. Um, the, the quality of the elements that you are going to use, you are getting, you are getting exactly from the code or code reference. Normally, the this limit, the relative maximum deflection, goes between L2 by 50, or L over 300, more or less, okay? That's the maximum deflection. So remember, if you want to check the deflection, uh, that's the, the way to set up the deflection, but also, if you want to check the, 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 the if you want to see the checks about the bar, doesn't show you there is this result over there. So the, if the beam is a slender, a slender, means that uh, um, you must check this kind of deflection first. Okay, uh, you have an extra information in this book. Uh, you have the limited deflection here. Uh, I want you to, I encourage you to read it. Um, now, uh, I'm going to see the, um, to edit the group, for example. In this group, in this site, from this point, point N1 and N2, you have the seconds. And for the last one, which is in three on the top, in the, la the last part, this is a tangent. The, 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 the definition is a tangent, and the reference is the point number one. Point number one is this one. Okay. You gotta be careful with this. So once you run the analysis about this small beam, you can check also the element. Click here. I want to. We already did that. We already did that. Now the analysis. We go for the uh, check element. Click here, and we displace exactly where you are. So we are using the IP 180, but is you know you can get it all lower. That's been that according to the load case scenario is is okay, more than okay, but also on the right side you have the percentage of use. You gotta be careful about the weight if you want to save money in the company, so you must go for the lower one maybe and you will be safe. The same from the same thing for the next the other bar. All right. So now we go for another example, uh, maybe, I know, well, I'm, I'm missing something. Now we go for forces. Uh, here, um, you can see the, 
just to show you here this part not here maybe the scale is not good maybe i'm going to include maybe one maybe 10 okay good so now you can see the deformation you want to do the deflections over here if you want to check the overlap now you have the deflections you have the stress which has always uh, mentioned before now if, if you apply the first law um, any force that you you you, you are applying in this in any, in any elements if that element has a mass and also are you creating an acceleration or inertia in that in that structure what the reaction means the the tension that you are creating that's in the bar so that's the way to to, to see or to check that tension in the bar okay um, i think this is it uh, we can go back you know to the analysis um, now you maybe you can maybe you might need the reactions in the bar click in one of them you will see the displacements and the information regarding to that knot the second knot and the last one is not okay because it's not supported for any external fixity in this case we are using uh, the knot number one external fixity and the second point we are using external fixity in the bar and um, uh, from now all of them we have different cases for the soft weight also for the for the load uh, dead load you see we are having some numbers here in the reaction in zeta zeta and also for the light load uh, creating different environment uh, that's the way to check it and now in the analysis we are we can we can display also the displacements if we have that kind of displacement okay um the same team over here and for the overlap which are going to be more important um now we're going to i want to show you another example which is the buckling Okay, for the backlink, um, we go here bar and check the backlink. I'm going to check the backlink here. So about the backlink, it's almost the same. You can you can work with these coefficients. You can, as you know, the the, the formula is L equals uh, equals beta by by la, by the, the by the distance. But you can you can use the beta, the simple. But you must check also the coactions. Depending on the coaction, you can use the beta. If it's not the case, you can introduce the 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 length. Um, with the length, you can start doing the analysis. Um, sometimes when you are working in a warehouse, um, some of the laterals, the lateral. Or one of the laterals of the warehouse um, are going to be um, supported by, by uh, different elements. Could be more than one element, one column, one, but be more than one column. But in between columns, you can start working with walls. That walls are not the way to recreate that walls is when you are you are using the right backlink. You don't need to, to, to uh, in the software, you don't need to start uh, introducing that wall here. But using that, th this information properly, you are recreating that restriction in that direction. Okay, I think this is it. Um, well, the same thing, the load case for this, card, for this uh, particular uh, uh, structure, we have several ones, we have three cases one load in that area one load in the center in this point and one load a little farther from this 
So for you can study what's going on with one of them. And um, this software is, is, is usually uh, helped you if you are a professor at the university level, uh, could be nice to, you know, for you to use it and, and try to recreate different um, scenarios. So the analysis is the same thing. You can check the bar, any bar. You, you, you will see the code check uh, depending on the code. Now we are using the euro code. In this case, you're watching the euro code, but any combinations, any solicitation, any um, deformation that we might have, we, we might have here, uh, you can check if everything is okay. If it's not okay, you will have it in red mark or in different color than green. And come here, um, check the reference, go to the article, read more about what is the problem. And perhaps with you know with this uh, information, the extra information, you can go back and do uh, the modification in in the structure. Um, I'm going to show you the uh, yeah the deformation by the for example by the uh, not P2 P1 which is more important. No, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, let me show you more. I'm going to increase this value, 200 perhaps. Yeah, 200 is okay. By 200, so perhaps you can see it properly. I'm using just what, I'm, I'm checking what is happening with the, can, uh, with the P1 load. P1 load is in this part over here, it's over here. So, you know, affecting the structure this way. I'm going to show you the second point, P2. So nothing happened, you know, because it's in the, it's over here. The P2 are affecting this part. And the last one, which is the P3 and P3, uh, a little bit, you know, not too much. So I, I think the worst case scenario is the one on the corner. And that's why we we can see the deflection right away. Uh, also, you can do it by displacement, sorry, by displacements. Uh, and you have different hypotheses here. And, and now we can see the deformation shape. The deformation shape is, is really important to, to check if you want to see how behave the structure. Okay, um, now we go for, go back here to a different, different case. Where should I go? Hmm. All right. So I want I want to show you first the the plane, the dimension of that structure, which is like this. It's six meters. Um, it's the same the same profile, but we have something different here, which is the knot in the middle. That knot in the middle um, create different behavior in the structure. So if you go for the uh, the the for the loads, sorry, for the analysis, and I check the, well, I'm going to show first the, the bar buckling. The buckling here is, this is my option right now, according to the coactions in both sides, in the in the plane, X, Y plane, and also in the X, Zeta plane. This is the this, the option in this case. But in, in, the, in the second bar, even if it's the same buckling, the same profile, the buckling that I'm choosing is different, right? But the solutions are different as well. So now I'm gonna show you the check element. Look, the difference in the, in the code check are 
like this, the resistance are going to be 1.01%, which is the percent of use. But for the second piece, uh, we are getting different results and the bottom is almost the same, but the weight changed a lot. And also on top, even the same piece, the, the same element, the resistance or the percentage of weight modify a lot. So it's, it's key important, it's really important to define properly that buckling coefficient, all right? So, um, so we go now for the, the tower. This is an electrical tower. Um, this electrical tower, um, sometimes it's, yeah, it's better, you know, to, um, right now I'm working with the observatory, astronomic observatory, and I finished it uh, recently. And I did it with this program, Site 3 d uh, I'm, I'm not using different program, just Site 3 d And it's, it's really complex, but uh, you managed to, to finish the, the, the job. But uh, in this particular case, which is really important, I'm gonna show you in 3D. It's really complex, you know, to to do it. So it's better to start the job in in another software. It could be CAT program, and, and then you can you can you can modify uh, the program um, using it or bringing this information to our software. Could be in 3D, or also you can introduce. Uh, something in 2D, right? After that, we can start working with different um, profiles. So I'm not going to do it, but uh, it's possible to do it. And now I'm going to show you something different, which is the the load case scenario. Remember <clears throat> that uh, in project and general data we have the options about the additional load cases. So in my case, for this for this job, which is available for you when you display the examples, um, you have five K five win cases. Um, usually, uh, when you when when you are doing the analysis of so one win, you have to introduce in in X and positive way and negative way. So high here, as you can see on top, you have one direction in A, positive and negative, another direction in B, which is called B, positive and negative, and the last one, which is the, the wind in front of the structure of the warehouse. On the bottom, the combinations, I'm not sure to show that part. And on top, we have a light load, just one case, one case scenario, one line load. And eventually, um, after that, um, <clears throat> we can, uh, remember that we were using any load case scenarios in just one bar. You can, in, you can use the bar, you can use the uh, loads in the bar, you can lose uh, load on the nut, and you can introduce any deflections in anywhere in the bar. That's why, um, this example goes well when we are going to see the load case scenario. So now I can displace that all the things that I showed you in the hypothesis before, you can display here all of them. I'm going to show you just the first one. The first one goes like this because the direction, if you go on the bottom, you can check the direction. It's an, it's an, an arrow here. That show you that this this the wind is going from the right side to the left side. Um, another one, I'm going to go. Another one could be the positive one. It says a negative positive now. The positive one is different. Um, the 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 person who did that, uh, they did it first. He knows the values and he did it uh, by hand bar by bar. Um, the last one maybe, the one in front, 
that's the load in front of the warehouse. And something nice to see is the snow, the effect of the snow on top of the, on the roof of the warehouse. And also we have a different kind of load that I haven't talked about it. Um, in, this, in this software, we are using just um, not, we are using bar, and also we are using sheets. And with sheets, uh, I finished the, the observatory astronomic in that I'm going to show you later. So now um, we can introduce a panel or a surface load. If, I, if I'm going to do a, a, super, a panel, I'm going to use this part here. I'm going to click here. You must select the frame. When you the last point you you can you can avoid the last point clicking the right click in the in the button. And now the best way to introduce is suppose that the, the wind is coming from, from the right to, to right to left or in any any direction. So the better to show that these winds are going to displace differently. The way I'm going to study the the the, the effect of that wind in the structure is, is up to me. So suppose I'm going to choose this direction. And now you see um, any effect of this wind will be distributed in these two bar. Okay. Uh, then I can start using different kind of options here. If it's a new one, I can, I, I can introduce a new one, a new one, not only the one that we have as a reference and give any value here, okay? After that, uh, if you run the analysis, you will see that displacements and the solicitations in that area are going to change or modify drastically. Um, then um, I have another um, option here which is the warehouse. This warehouse mm, is in the manual. I did in the model. You, you go back here and do the example here, display the example, the three examples. You will have this, um, this structure. It's not in there, but mm, I did it because uh, it's, it's good for, um, you know, for, it, it, it's a good example to, to know be, uh, in a better way the, the, the software. <clears throat> so what, I, what I'm trying to show, to, to show you is that in front, well, I uh, forgot to tell you that the best way to work in the software is to create uh, windows. Windows means that uh, in this option, you are working in 3D, like, like you are watching right now in front, but I can, in, I can create different options in 2D uh, section about this, this, this element, this uh, structure, and, and also any horizontal area. The mezzanine is this part, you know, this part over here. This, this is the mezzanine. And I, if I want to view it, just create the sections and every load that I'm trying to to display for you, you can see it. If it's something here, you will see it right now. Okay, that's the load that we are considering in that part. Perhaps this is the office and we have some people working there, or maybe you are going to store uh, some materials, uh, heavy materials, but uh, that's the way to, to do it. So we go back to the windows, um, perhaps the vertical frame. So imagine that, um, that's all the load case scenario, even the winds and also the self, the dead load and light load. But um, remember that going back in time and uh, this software when they start, they start doing it, uh, the, the way the, the, this software was called Meta 3D. Let, later, they'll change it for Site 3D. Um, at that time, you know, they were thinking to solve warehouse, warehouses. So, they have they come out with something very particular about the how to introduce the the wind loads properly. <clears throat> I know it's different. You know, if you check one of them, there are so many. There are so many here that is difficult to introduce it by hand. So the software 
the, uh, we have an extra software, uh, which is called the Portical Frame Generator, that allowed you to introduce just the first, the first uh, frame, like you are watching right now. And from that, from that software, um, you introduce all the details about the dimensions, um, things that are really important regarding to the load case scenario. If the people are going to work on top, if you are going to have snow, uh, if, even if the structure are going to be uh, um, open, really open. Um, and then the software always, all, uh, all uh, as well, can give you the, by default, the purlins um, define, they, they can define the purlins according to all the information that you are introducing in the software. Beside that, um, give you uh, the opportunity to take the report about that purlins separately. You don't have to introduce that purlins in the structure from now on because you are going, once you finish, you are going to introduce the particles to the uh, site 3D environment. Um, you have only the possible uh, elements that you are going to have in the in site 3D, but also uh, from now on, you can uh, start introducing the elements of all the profiles that are going to constitute the, the structure. But at the same time, but you got by default is this, all these um, live loads, dead loads, wind loads automatically. It's really important. Another um, use of this software, which is called the Portical, uh, Portical Frame Generator, is that if you have a marquee, for example, you have a parking lot and you want to protect the, the cars and you have only one section, Suppose this is the right section you have here, the right section, just this part in this part. So in, in that case, also you can use the portica frame generator and introduce the same geometry, the same size, and in both, in both sides. And finish with the normative, finish with the code, finish with your, with your um, cases, a scenario, and then, when once you are inside 3D, you can delete the the left side of your house, delete all the light loads on the loads and wind loads in the left side, and continue analysis, continue, continue the analysis about the marquee. Okay, that's another uh, way to use the software. So I have here uh, maybe that one. This is the portical frame generator, but uh, it's just a quick, just to show you quick because we have only one one hour. And um, but at later, you see if we have if we have arranged the possibility to show you more in details about the portical frame generator, we will do it. But now because we have running out, running out of time, I can show you just right away. The you have to choose the new particle in the software and then introduce the geometry of the frame that I already show you, and then uh, it will display like this. Then you you will be able to uh, analyze the the purlins on top. Also, you can you have you can use lateral purlins, and beside that, um, they give you the deflections according to the limit that you already analyze, do the analysis. The, that uh, deflections. Remember, this is a um, very a very normal way to to displace these these values. L over 250 or L2 over 300 is more or less the best way, the usual way. <clears throat> and also uh, on the description description parlance, uh, you start with something else. You can start with these kind of profiles. Um, P, um, once you choose one of these buttons, um, the program are going to, uh, to check according to the load case scenario, which purlins are going to fulfill their requirements. Once it's done, you can go for the second up, second step, which is the separation between or the distance between purlins, and then you can create any one you want, you might need, but the the problem, the the program, the program by itself are going to check what is the best distance 
uh, in between parallels. And then when you finish with a part, um, you give you a full report about the how the profile is, is working in the structure and they give you this kind of um, uh, documentation as well. And then uh, the last step is just to show uh, which kind of options that you are going to be uh, to visualize after uh, finishing with this software once you are in Cyp 2 d that you will be able to um, f uh, um, uh, define if the particle, the first particle are going to uh, work um, or behave the same way from the last one or in between. In the between particles, you can create some kind of working together. If you modify one of them, one of one of the elements in the in the middle particles are going to affect all of them. But depends, no. And um, I prefer to not to do so. I I I, I prefer to describe a few of, of the few determination about the selection. And then when when you are in type 3D. Uh, it's very, it's pretty easy to to uh, to do whatever you want. Um, that's the case, and I have another um, things to show you that um, um, sometimes we forgot to talk about the in how to call the interactions between software and. Um, um, as you can see uh, before, we are using the particle frame generator. And once you are inside 3D, mm. the conventions, the wind conventions are different in, in SciCAD. So that's, that's, that's um picture give you in the right side, the wind combination that we have inside 3D, in SciCAD, sorry. And the second one, which is this in red one, it has the combinations of the conventions that we have in Site 3D. And um, in, in the last case, which is called um, um, 3D interactions, that kind of a structure, we use it a lot in the program. Um, it's, it's, it's a very nice uh, way to introduce the, the program automatically knows or recognize that the wind, the wind uh, solution, the wind conditions and with different software are going to uh, um, displace properly in when you are using both of them. So on the bottom, you have the in, in the red color, the conventions that we have inside 3D. On the bottom, you have the convention that we have on, on SciCAD. But don't worry about it because and the program by itself are going out automat automatically. Once you export the structure to SciCAD, uh, the program recognize this convention and do, th do their proper job, all right? Uh, thing is this, um, well, there, there is some difference between, between uh, if you have one place, if a, you have the warehouse just in one, 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 one level, that means that we have only one selection, but if we want, one one side, one side of the structure uh, have a different level. Uh, you must take care about this before going to export that in SciCAD. That's all. Okay. So one of the one of the the the, the best way, the best way to do it is you have to select one side of the structure, fix it connect, connected, and the other one freely. The one, for example, if I choose this part, the one here. If I choose this part freely, that means zero connection. I'll show you later. And the second part, which is the this, the right side, will be fixed connection. And then once you are in SciCAD, you have to define that this connection has to be fixed. And that's the solution. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so we go back for the uh, 3D view. So you see, this this very messy job uh, is well done using the particle frame generator, and also uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting, you know, that uh, you you have everything done in a, in a seconds. <clears throat> now, 
just to see perhaps the the check element well it's going to take time and well sorry guys so we go back here since while meanwhile um the last thing that i want to tell you uh to show you is the job that i'm working with Okay, this is the job. Uh, I'll show you in 3D, I think is the best way. Okay, so uh, that's the, the observatory, astronomical observatory, and um, we did it inside 3D. It's very really nice. Uh, it's a little complex, but uh, it's, it's, it's possible to do so. And um, once you finish with this, it is called sheet, the the gray color means shields, and these shields I'm going to describe this, uh, this section or one of them is is for uh, the thickness is four millimeters. Um, you want to create a new one, a new shell. It, it could be concrete. You can use steel. You can like cold form steel. You could be also aluminum or any generic one, okay? So um, I think the best way to, to see it, to visualize the job is if I'm going to open uh, what I did in, in SciCAD. Um, I'm going to close all these. Okay, all right, uh, I think this is it. I'm going to open SideCut. Take a little while, don't worry. Um, so, uh, Okay, so that the same structure, I can display that structure on top of this building. Well, this is one way to, to use the 3D interaction between structures, and uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, you will see all the effects. You can introduce the wind effect in my, inside 3D, um, then here. Um, I think this is it. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, you can write something in the chat. So if you have any question, just let me know.
Okay, guys, so I guess you don't have any questions. So I finished the transmission. Thank you very much.